All right, need to make a video here um, explaining some very important things that have been going on here behind the scenes for a long time. And um, um, I'm a Bible believing preacher, and uh, so I'm going to read scriptures. That's what I try to do in all my videos because I always want to line up with the Word of God. And uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, I'm going to go there. I'm not going to do things that are contrary to the Word of God. And uh, just came in from doing some shoveling and stuff like that here, so I still got my coat on and everything else. And this is just, this whole thing is just really, really getting to me. So I need to make uh, some announcements, some statements, explain some things, and uh, some changes coming. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 through 15. Who goeth a warfare any time at his own charges? Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? A man in ministry has a right to earn a living from the people that he's ministering to. All right, You can't go to war out of your own pocket. All right? You need to have people sponsor you going to war. All right? If you're planting a vineyard, if you're planting things in, in, that are, you know, doing videos and things like that, or writing books that are producing fruit, you have a right to make a living off of what you're doing. Verse 8, Say I these things as a man, or saith not the law the same also? Paul's saying this isn't just something I just came up with. The law even says this. Verse 9, For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn, Doth God take care for oxen, or saith he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? If others be partakers of this power over you, are, we, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Now that's what I've done for years and years and years. I'll explain that here in just a little bit as I continue. But I've done this. All right? Not anymore. Verse 13. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. But I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glorying void. Um, Paul didn't take money from the Corinthians. You read over in the book of Philippians chapter 4, he took money from them. And some of the other brethren also supported Paul in his work. But there were groups that Paul didn't take money from. Paul said, I want to preach the gospel. I want to get this stuff out. Now that's what I decided on years and years ago. I first went into ministry in 2007 full-time ministry. King James Video Ministries was started back then. I'm not a YouTube vlogger or whatever other thing. I am in ministry. The Lord called me into full-time ministry. And there has been a lot of fruit that has come from this ministry right here. A lot of it. All right? Um, and I have to speak like this. And all you're being prideful, just go watch something else. Okay? And, and this this video is not to those of you that do support this ministry, um, but your numbers are so small that it's just it's getting to the point of absurd now. All right, I felt that the right thing to do years and years ago was not to preach a lot of sermons about giving and things like that. Tithing is unscriptural. There's no 10% required tithe out of people's incomes and stuff like this. That's a whole scam. All right, I have sermons against tithing. But I have specifically said I'm not going to make a thing of preaching periodic messages, trying to get people to give and, and make sure you give 10% of your income and all this stuff. You're required. and I'm not going to lie about what the Bible teaches. And I thought I can make videos. And I started out making DVDs. Okay, Here are two of them. I started out making DVDs so I can earn an income, a fair income for my work. Right? I mean, would anybody fault Dr. Peter Ruckman for making an income off of his books that he's written or anybody else that's ever written any books? Is it wrong to make an income from work that you do? 
But I decided I'm going to do an experiment. I'm going to put out my stuff copyright free. I'm going to just make videos for free and I'm going to depend upon the body of Christ through their gifts to keep this ministry going. And it's not happening. And I'm learning that. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Now I'm going to be talking about some, some things here. So if you're a friend of the ministry, then please hear me out. If you're not a friend of the ministry, go away. You know, go, go haunt somebody else's channel. All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. I am become a fool in glorying. I don't want to talk about the fruits of this ministry. I don't want to talk about the, the I don't even know how many people have gotten saved from this ministry. I don't, I can't, I, I don't count. I don't keep track of it. I have a whole tote over here filled with letters, people's testimonies saying how they've gotten saved, how they're now using the King James Bible, how they've, their lives have changed as a result of my preaching in this ministry. I have to become a fool in glorying because people say, oh, you're just, a, you're just a nothing. You're a nobody. You're whatever else. I have to speak about myself when I get to this point. And I'm going to explain why I'm saying these things here in just a little bit. Think of it this way, okay? It's tax time. And I, this is the time of the year that you start to look at the year, the previous year, and say, what did we earn? What did we, you know, and things like that. It's quite distressing what happened this past year. And I'm going to have to talk about that. You have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you. For nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. I am nothing. I'm nobody. I'm, I'm just some dumb redneck or whatever else you want to call me. I, I, all the names and things like that. I'm nobody. I'm, I'm nothing. But am I behind any, any of these guys here? Any of these people here? You know, I love Dr. Ruckman, but there's things that Dr. Ruckman never preached that I have preached. I've learned a lot from some of the men that are behind me here that these books that I've, that I've read and things like that. And God has used me just as much as He's used some of these guys up here. I've seen a lot of people get saved as a result of this ministry. I've seen a lot of people doing things for the Lord as a result of this ministry. I have to speak foolishly. I'm sorry. Please forgive me this wrong. Verse 12, Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. They were seeing what Paul was doing. There were mighty deeds from Paul's ministry. There have been mighty deeds from this ministry. Verse 13, For what is it wherein ye were inferior to other churches, except it be that I myself was not burdensome to you? Forgive me this wrong. Paul's being sarcastic there. Look at what he's saying. For what is it wherein ye were inferior to other churches? They're thinking, oh, we're great and everything else. And he's saying, what is it that you were inferior to the other churches? Since you're so wonderful, what was the thing that you were inferior in? Uh, just the fact that, uh, except it be that I myself was not burdensome to you. I wasn't a burden to you. Okay? You're so great and so everything else. I wasn't a burden to you. You didn't give me a cent. And what's he say? Forgive me this wrong. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And I will gl very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. But be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. <laughs> did I make a gain of you by any of them whom I sent unto you? See, what happens is when, and this is what I realize, and this is what Paul's saying in this passage. Paul's there and he's giving himself willingly to these Corinthian believers. And what are they doing? They're going back here in uh, chapter 11. You know, he's talking about, you know, bearing with me my folly. I got I to explain these things and stuff like this. And he's saying, you know, that they're basically questioning his authority. He's there and he's going, I, I did all these mighty deeds among you. I taught you about salvation. I've taught you so many things. I've given myself to you. And what do you do? False prophets come along and they start to say, 
Paul's not this and Paul's not that. And, and they start to put down Paul and the people start to go, yeah, I guess Paul's not really so great after all, after all he's done for them. And I've seen so many people turn against this ministry that were once friends of this ministry. So many people. And I think to myself, how many of those people would have turned on me had they had to pay for what I do? I gave myself freely. I gave my, my talents and my abilities and, and my time. I gave it freely. And what do I get? A very small minority of people that even want to support this ministry. Oh, but I'm making a gain of you. Let me talk about some of that. Oh, you know, Brian Nunninger is trying to get rich off of people. Sure. Oh, yeah. Let me explain some things here. And by the way, you know, I'm sure that, you know, nobody's ever seen this coat before. You know, it's a one I haven't worn in video before. It's an old one. It's a very old one. Uh, used. I bought it used. So don't, you know, make an issue of my coat or something like this. It's very cold here. And I, I could I could do anything. Anything I do, I get, you know, these stinking trolls going after me. It's ridiculous. Here's some truth. Okay, here's some statistics for you. King James Video Ministries was started in 2007. Since 2007, the vast majority of the years that I've been in ministry, I have literally operated below the United States poverty level for income. The majority of the years. Um, that's a fact. You can look up the poverty level. Uh, it's, you know, twenty to twenty-four thousand dollars. There were years I only made a few thousand dollars. Some of my first years in ministry, I was making, I think some of the years it was like two to three thousand dollars a year is what I was making. Um, it was rough. And and you know what was the funny thing about that? In those times that I was doing that and I was willingly and, and freely giving people information and, and things like that and answering a lot of people's emails early on and things, um, in, those, in that time, I was living at my parents' place. I couldn't afford to be out on my own. I was not making very much money. But yet I was still able to buy stuff from Ruckman. I would still take what little money I had and a little bit of extra and I would still spend the full amount on Ruckman's material. Why? Because I love the, the, the Lord and I want to learn more about the Lord and I know that Ruckman was trying to get the truth out. I wanted to support a man like that. Oh, there's people that, oh, I can't afford to give anything to your ministry, Brother Brian, but you sure have helped me. I've seen nearly all of your 1,200 plus videos for free. But this past year was a real blow to us. Um, our donations were cut in half. I uh, worked just as hard as ever, but uh, my income was half of what it was the previous year. And uh, you know, and I'm just I'm just looking at this whole thing, and I'm thinking, okay, and and I'm supposed to just continue doing this, just giving away what I do for free, taking my time and my talents and my abilities. And, and just, I'm just going to give it away. Just keep giving it away. Things are going to change. You know, I, I, need to, I need to publicly apologize about something too, and that is I've been very double-minded since the beginning of my ministry. I've shared this before, a uh, testimony type of a thing, where I said that the Lord called me into the ministry, and I, I honestly didn't want to do it, and I said about how that I went into ministry hoping that I would fail. Um, I've been a real coward. Uh, throughout the years of my ministry and I have not um, you know uh, taken strong stands on this this issue and I've let people take advantage of me for years and years and years and years and years and I don't want to make it look like I'm about money and things like this and I don't I don't want to you know copyright anything and I don't want to have to charge money or ask for money or whatever um, those times are going away uh, the Lord really convicted me recently and just said to me, are you going to be a preacher or aren't you? Or are you just going to play preacher until things get rough and then you can go back to the art world or something like that? I can't go back to the art world. 
I mean, are you kidding me? I went to an art, you know, I've been going to, went to have some art galleries here recently, and I'm just like, these people are so messed up. I wouldn't make it 10 minutes in the art world anymore. Going to the art shows and stuff, being around the Sodomites and the New Agers and all these other people. I can't make it in the art world. Who am I kidding? I'm a preacher. The Lord called me into this ministry, and it's been confirmed in the last 10, you know, over 10 years now. The Lord has done a lot through this ministry, a whole lot through this ministry. Uh, a lot of people, uh, they have a testimony that, you know, they're going to heaven because of the preaching and teaching of this ministry. I'm sorry, I have to speak as a fool. I have to say these things. In the month of January, the month of January, and it's, and it's always been this way, so don't, you know, I, I know the little devil-worshipping little idiots out there, they'll go, oh, good, things are going rough, maybe we'll get rid of Brian Denlinger. Uh, you're not going to get rid of me. I'm going to change tactics, and I'm going to come out even stronger than I have in the past. All right? Uh, sorry to the little people that are possessed with the devils and things like that. Uh, the ministry has always faltered. If you go back through the years, I've always had money issues and money problems because I put my stuff out for free. I mean, who does this? This is insane. I've done this thing for a long time, and thankfully, the body of Christ has been there. There have been those people that really understand what I'm trying to do, and they do donate to the ministry. They see the fruit, and you will be blessed in heaven, greatly blessed in heaven for what you've done, helping the ministry to continue. Um, you see the fact that I don't charge for my things, and you say, I want to keep, help him to keep going. But it's just, it's just like, the, this is ridiculous. The month of January, okay, we had 41 donations out of 24,000 plus subscribers. Uh, that's a little bit disproportionate. I mean, what is that, less than 1% or something? I mean, 41 donations out of 24,000 subscribers? You say, well, brother Brian, they don't all—they don't all you know watch every single video because you don't get twenty-four thousand views per video. Well, I'm aware of that, but we get two thousand, usually right around two thousand views per video. But only forty-one people donated. Um, that's an issue. That's a big issue. That's called a bunch of people who have an entitlement mentality that think that I should just be here, just spending my time, just making their videos for free, and they don't have to do anything to help this ministry continue. That's disgusting. It's really, really disgusting. And again, let me just explain something. We are not supported by any kind of a church out there or something like that. I don't draw a salary from anybody. There's no organization that's, that's helping this out or something. This is an extension or a sister ministry or something like that. I'm doing this thing completely uh, I mean, with the Lord's help, I do everything here. My wife helps with the research, but I do all of the camera work, all the editing work, all the answering people's letters and answering comments. I mean, it's to the point I can't even answer everybody anymore. You know, it's crazy. For years and years and years, we send out Bibles. We give Bibles to people all over the place. That comes out of our pocket. I have camera equipment that goes bad. I have computers that need to be replaced and things like this, and it's all coming out of my pocket. But that's okay, because I'm not supposed to make much money. The only money that I should, you know, the people send money here, I should only be allowed to buy tracks with it or something like this and Bibles or something. I shouldn't be allowed to eat from that or, or buy clothing or maintain my vehicles or something like this. It's insanity, all right? People put standards onto me that they themselves would never be able to, to, to follow. It's crazy. And again, I did this as an experiment. I thought to myself, you know what? I want to see people get saved. I want to change people's lives. I'm going to do this thing for free. And I've done that, and it has cost me dearly. Uh, Ten years of my life. I'm getting to be an old man now. I mean, I started thinking this thing back, you know, in my early 30s. And here I am, I'm 42 years old. I got gray hair and all kinds of things. I didn't have gray hair when I first started. You know, I'm, I know why I have gray hair now. All this time, all this time. You know, you have great rewards in heaven and stuff. Yeah, sure. But you see, here's the problem. 
I would have greater rewards in heaven if I was able to concentrate more on the ministry and, and not having money issues and things all the time and always being just above the poverty level. We've had a few good years and things like that where we're not at just above the poverty level, but it's just like, it's ridiculous. And, and again, you know, I'm going to get attacked for this. Oh, you know, he's asking for money. And, all. and I'm just going, don't people understand what we try to do for the body of Christ here? I mean, you know, using the analogy of, of Peter Ruckman here or, or Sam Gipp or, or anybody that's ever written anything about the Bible or anything and just say they can sit down and they can write out their, their book and then they just go hand out free copies of it. Oh, it's okay. I'll, I'll pay for it. And a couple people give them a little bit of money and they're going, well, all right, I guess I can eat this week or something like this. It's terrible. You know, and I've said, I, I have some points written out here. Um, you know, I've said that we're never going to monetize this channel. And the reason for not monetizing this channel is because they're putting ads on from the, the lost secular world out there. I'm not going to have that. I'm not going to be getting money and things like that from the lost secular world. I'm not going to do that. I mean, it's ridiculous. And, and something I've been thinking about for a long time, I thought about starting a secular channel where I could do videos on logging, where I could do videos on wood turning. As I was a professional wood turner for many years. Um, I could do other types of homesteading type of videos. And I, I mean, Lord's given me a lot of talents. And again, I've always kind of relied on that stuff to say, well, I can do that if the ministry doesn't work out. I'm being double-minded. The Lord called me to preach and teach His Word. And that's what I'm going to do. And you can think me, oh, you're arrogant, whatever else. Whatever, okay? Do, do something else. I mean, get a life. These people that just dog my ministry all the time. I mean, you, you people are some of the most pathetic losers that there has ever been. Right, and and if I get one more person, I'll just I'm just going to make a statement here, okay? If anybody ever writes me again and says, "Well, you're against monetization, but what about your PayPal donation thing?" I'm not even going to reply to you. In fact, I'm going to block you, okay? That's instant. Just I mean, you're you're an imbecile if you think that PayPal is the same as Google monetization, okay? PayPal is a form of online banking. If I get somebody in Germany that wants to donate to the ministry, they can't send me a bunch of, you know, marks or whatever they use over there and stuff. I get somebody in, in uh, England, they aren't going to send me a couple pounds or something. It's an international form of banking online. It's not the same thing. PayPal doesn't put ads in my videos and pay me for putting the ads there or something stupid. Okay, so you're not, you're not even going to get an answer from me. I got one the other day from private message thing. Oh, I, I was watching just you know I was watching some of Robert Breakers. These people just irritate me. Your PayPal, you know, is that isn't that monetization? No, stupid. It's not monetization. It's online banking. Uh, right now, um, we are working on a Patreon account. I know a lot of the brethren have suggested that to me, and I was like, no, no, I got to do all this stuff for free. I don't want to charge for my videos and things. Um, and But, you know, I've been praying about this thing, and I'm just like, you know what? I mean, if I make money, then the video quality is better. And I feel motivated to do more video. Right now, it's like the harder I work, a lot of times, the less money I make. It's insanity. So... Having a Patreon account, uh, like a lot of you have suggested that I should do, um, I'm going to be able to charge a fee for the videos that I make. Um, that's what I'm going to do. You know, you're paying me to make videos. And there are people that will give, you know, donation amounts and things like that. If you give a $40 donation to the, the ministry or something in a month, well, you're not going to even be spending that much at Patreon you know, paying for each of the videos individually. You're donating a small amount. Each time I make a video, I bring a video out, there's that small amount that comes back. It's like making online DVDs. So that's what I'm going to start doing. I have to. I, I, I don't have a choice. If I don't charge anything for the videos, I just get taken advantage of. Get a bunch of welfare Christians that come along and just expect me to just keep dishing out videos and you just, just sit there and don't do anything to help the ministry. So we will be opening a, opening a Patreon account 
And I'm going to tell you right now, um, there will be preaching videos and stuff like that uh, that are going to be only available through Patreon. You're going to have to, there will be a fee charged for each video. Um, and I'm going to make the videos a lot better than just, you know, some of the stuff I've been doing. I've been trying to get a lot of quantity out over quality. I mean, my sermons that I put out are still better than what you're going to get in most Babel buildings. Um, and I, I'm sorry, i got to speak foolishly. I'm just, I'm being honest with this whole video. If you don't like honesty, well, again, this is not the channel for you. But um, I will be bringing out some kind of, you know, some of the behind the scenes type of thing. I want to talk about some of the finances here at King James Video Ministries, what our goals are for the future. Um, those videos are going to be copyrighted. I've never copyrighted anything I've ever done, but I'm going to start copywriting. And the reason for it is because, again, I'm getting very sick and tired of people taking my work and cutting it all up and, and making me say things that I didn't say. And another thing with Patreon is I can see your name and I can see your email if you're one of my patrons. Okay, so um, I'm going to have a little bit better control over who's getting in to watch the videos. And if I see heretics, well, out you go. If people that, that spend their time in nothing else but to, you know, attack my videos and things like this, well, goodbye. I mean, again, uh, oh, that sounds like a cult or something. I'm going to have a church congregation, all right, and it's going to be online. I miss the fellowship in the comments section from my brothers and sisters in Christ that you challenge me and you ask me questions and, and we have good back and forth and stuff like that. I want to make that happen. I would like to eventually do live stream type of stuff where we can actually have times where I can actually be there online and people can tune in and ask me questions right there. You have your camera set up, I have my camera set up, and we can have fellowship like that. I would like to be able to do that, but right now I can't because it's just this constant money issues and money issues and money issues. i got a truck right now that's having brake problems that we got totally ripped off, totally taken on this truck. And um, it's just solid rust underneath. I mean, the thing is terrible. And again, I'd like to show that on video, just you know, to people that are, uh, you know, onto the Patreon thing. And I'll I'll make an announcement when the Patreon account is up and ready to go. Um, but I'm going to be offering some, you know, behind the scenes type of videos and stuff like that. But you're going to pay for it. I'm not going to give it away for free anymore. I've been doing that now for ten years, and people take advantage of that, and it's not going to happen anymore. Um, you know, and I, I'm just looking through my notes here. Uh, like I said earlier, I mean, there have literally been times when our donations are so low, we're barely making any money. I mean, we're paying our bills, we're, we're, we're eating. I mean, a lot of times we're down to, you know, I've been eating, you know, the, there have been days where I've been eating one meal a day, um, just not because we don't have the money. Uh, to, to buy more food than that, but just because I'm so stressed out, I'm so depressed, I just don't even feel like eating. And it's just, it's wrecking my health, and I'm just going, why am I doing this to myself? God's given me the talent, God's given me the ability that I can make a good living for myself and my wife and my son. I mean, if I don't provide for my own, I've denied the faith and I'm worse than an infidel. God called me to be a preacher. God has shown over the last 10 years that he's for what I'm preaching. You don't have to agree with everything, whatever. But if you have watched enough of my videos, you know that God gives me understanding of the book and I have the courage to preach what most preachers will not preach. So there have been times when our donations are very, very low and I'm just like, and I think, well, maybe if I preach harder, maybe if I preach more sermons and I come out with like five, six sermons, just like boom, 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 and just going through the word and, and what the Lord's showing me and everything else. And I do that and I watch and I think, okay, the body of Christ will see that I've put out a whole bunch of new material, you know, for people. I'm feeding the flock of God and I'm thinking, okay, they're going to help. They'll, they'll help us out of the situation. Nope, nope. And that's why I'm saying the system is broken. It needs to be fixed. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm going to go back to actual physical DVDs again because I realize the technology change type of a thing right now. Uh, I mean, it was always kind of a weird limit thing where you have this, you know, the DVD and you can only put like 4.7 gigabytes or, 
know, whatever of, of information on it, I think it is. And, you know, uh, you got to burn the DVDs, you got to create the art for the thing and whatever else. It's easier for me just to charge a fee online. And um, so that's probably what I'm going to be doing. Um, but there's other things I would, I really, really feel called of the Lord to get into writing books. That's another thing I'd like to do. And, um, you know, there's there's just so many projects that I want to do. So much information that the Lord has given me. Uh, controversial stuff that just nobody's preached on. I mean, nobody has access to some of the stuff that I have. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a there, I'm looking over at a book right now over on my desk. And um, it was a book on predestination, uh, not predestination, the sovereignty of God. Okay, one of the, the main core beliefs of Calvinism. And it's written by Roman Catholics. And they're talking about some of the, the beliefs of John Calvin. And there's Jesuit priests writing articles. I showed it in one of my videos. And um, I had a guy send it to me. And, and, you know, he's written me different times. Well, why aren't you doing a review on it? Well, because I'm just busy, you know, being stressed out and trying to keep this ministry afloat by producing free videos that people don't have to pay for. So, you know, I mean, there's, there's just so much stuff that the Lord has given us. We get people sending us things, and I'm just going like, wow, this is really going to be a, a good book to read or whatever. And I can never get around to it because I'm always trying to get these, you know, the quantity sermons out, just, just pumping sermons out, sermons, 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 in the hopes that people will say, I see Brother Brian's really trying here. Let's support his ministry. And there are those of you who do, and praise the Lord for you. I, I thank the Lord that you've been there for us and supported us. All right? But I mean, 41 people in the month of January helped the ministry out. That's inappropriate. And finally, I'll say this. Right now, we need a lot of money, a whole lot of money, because we're trying to build at the property. I mean, and, and again, oh, you're going to build some big, you know, 3,500 square foot uh, home or something like that? Uh, no, actually, we're building what people would call a tiny home to live in. And I'm going to be bringing out some stuff on that, showing some things about what our plans are, what we've done, what we're doing, and, uh, but it's going to be private. And it's going to be copyrighted, and you're going to have to pay to watch it. Because I'm, not, I'm just not going to give this stuff away anymore. It's insanity. All right? I mean, you know, I was talking about this with my wife, and she said, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. So, yeah, the ministry has been insane for the last 10 years. I've been doing the same things over and over and over again. Instead of trying to sell my work... And, and put in the time and, and I put in the time and the labor and everything else and I, I, I'm not going to sell it. I'm just going to give it away and I'll get supported by the brethren. Oh, look, I, you know, barely made any money. Well, let's try it again and let's try it again and let's try it again. The insanity is going to stop. I want to be an author. I want to be a video producer, one that can produce physical things that you can take a book and you can hand it to somebody or you can take a DVD and you can hand it to somebody or you can whatever. And I'm not, I am not that right now. And a lot of people don't even take me seriously. They just think I'm some YouTube dude or something that, you know, just produces videos for fun after I get off work or something like this. The Lord gave us a property and again, we, you know, we had all kinds of problems there because we're scraping together and stuff. And I'm doing what I can to try and make money. It's just, it's insanity. Lord gave us a property. We need to build there. We're, we're, it's an hour and a half to the south of here, you know, is where our property's at. We got to go down there and, and try to build as, as, you know, when I can and things. And we got snow here and everything else. Eventually, we're going to be moving our ministry offices uh, from here, this place, this old place, which is a whole other issue. Um, you know, we're going to be moving this to down there. So we have the property expenses. We have, we're going to eventually need some new offices. And, and just to give you an example, we actually tried to buy a place that was about two or three miles away from our property. It was an old double wide trailer that had been totally trashed by the people that lived there. And our bid was $15,000. So just in case you're thinking, oh, they're buying these big corporate offices or something like this. 
okay, we're not even going to be spending probably forty thousand dollars on a on a ministry office. And yet I see these big ministry type of guys and they're going, we need to raise a hundred thousand dollars for our TV studio or for this or that. And they're running, you know, people with church buildings and stuff like this. You know, I looked into what church buildings cost back when I was in Pennsylvania and it was like, you know, small ones were like half a million dollars, you know, five hundred thousand dollars. And people you know, have a problem with us trying to, to buy a little old dumpy place that I can fix up into an office for the ministry or something. We have our building things that we need to do. And by the way, our, our tiny home that we're going to be building is going to be completely off-grid. No running water, no electricity, uh, because we believe that that's a very healthy way to live. We're not forcing it on anybody. I'm not saying you're going to hell if you have electricity. You know, <laughs> uh, i gotta, I got to say this stuff for all the, the trolls that continue to watch this video with the, uh, their obsessive compulsions that they have. You know, we're going to be living extremely cheap. So lower income is not going to be as big a deal in the future. But right now, to get to where we need to be, we need to make a lot of money to make things happen. So it's not another five years till we can make things happen. You know? <laughs> so we need to build out our property. We need a new office down closer to there and a vehicle issue. Um, we're going to be doing some traveling this year, Lord willing. And uh, we need a vehicle that can actually do the traveling. Uh, right now, we have a 2005, I think it is, uh, you know, like 2000, yeah, 2005 Chevy truck that has so many rust problems underneath, it's ridiculous. Um, already had the brake lines go out the one time, just totally rusted through. Took it into the garage and didn't even know it, but the gas tank actually, one of the straps, metal straps that was holding the gas tank up, had totally rusted off. And the gas tank was hanging like this underneath my truck. Could have hit the road and burst and, and stuff as a plastic tank. Could have hit the road and burst and gasoline everywhere and we could have been killed with that thing. Lord protected us. But as it was up on the lift, I'm walking around underneath going, I mean, I trusted this guy. I asked, you know, he's, oh, we don't sell rust buckets and things like this. Yeah. Totally ripped us off. I should have looked underneath. I, it was a stupid mistake on my part. But... Totally rusty, and I'm looking in there like, yeah, see this up here? Look at all these brake lines where they you know, con kind of congregate here on this part of the frame. He's like, look how badly corroded it is. It's just a matter of time before these brake lines burst. So I'm outside the other day, and uh, it's just brake, you know, check your brakes and stuff. A little light comes up there or something like this. The brakes felt a little bit spongy. I still have some pressure. The light didn't come on the day when I started it up. But just there's no way to fix the thing. It's not worth fixing. It's so badly rusted in underneath. Our other vehicle is a 2004 Chevy Tracker. Uh, both of them, uh, well, the, the Tracker has 140,000 miles. The truck has about 90,000 miles on it right now. It's one of the reasons I bought it because I thought, oh, it's low mileage. It's okay. No, it's not. Um, the Tracker has a hole in the exhaust, and it runs pretty good other than that, but it's, it's got an exhaust leak, and I already fixed the exhaust not long ago. So, you know... It's just, we're, we're just doing this thing. It's just, it is insanity what I've been doing for the last 10 years. Uh, just producing free videos, just free videos, just giving away my labor. You know, I mean, any of you, put yourself in my shoes and see how you would do. Go to your work and just say, hey, you know what? You don't need to pay me. You can if you want to, boss, but you don't have to pay me. I'll just continue to work here and I'll work hard and everything else. If you feel like paying me, good. If not, well, don't worry about it. I'll find some way to get by. It's absolutely insane. So, you know, and when I say a new vehicle, I, I, you know, never mean a new as in 2018 vehicle. I wouldn't buy it even if I was a millionaire. Okay, I don't like new vehicles like that. All right. And, you know, I, I got I to gotta address something else too, which I've gotten over the years. And they say, well, how do we know where the money's going? Um, well, I'm earning a normal living here, okay? You don't need to, to comb through all the things that I spend my money on, all right? Um, you understand my character, okay? If I am making all kinds of money and all of a sudden I start buying a yacht or I buy a this or I buy a that or whatever else and I'm just, you know, I mean, what do you think I'm going to go on a vacation to the Bahamas or something like this? Again, I see preachers and they go on vacations and they're going to this resort and, the, you know, all this other stuff and, I, and I'm like, 
We haven't even, you know, gone on vacation. We'll take a day trip down to the ocean side or something like that, and we're tracking the whole time we go down. You know, this year we're, we're thinking about taking the first vacation we've had in four years or something like that. You know, it's going to be driving to see family. So when I say get a new, new vehicle, what I'm talking about is getting a decent used vehicle. Probably going to have to buy one from one of the southern states and have it shipped here or something like that. Because if you buy anything from northern Maine and it's been on the roads in the winter here, it's pretty much destroyed by all the chemicals that they put on the roads here. But, uh, you know, I, I have other studies ready. I mean, right here, just to show you this. This is just part of it. Just to show you, look at that stack there. Old photographs of my uh, all the vehicles and things like that. ATVs, dirt bikes, you know, street bikes, cars, trucks. The, the vehicle testimony because, uh, you know, I'll show you something else here real quickly. This will be in the vehicle testimony thing when I decide to do it. Um, right here is my degree, my mechanic degree, right there. I'll show it in better detail in another video. Um, but right there it is. I am. I went through the training to be a motorcycle mechanic. Um, vehicles were a big part of my life, a big part of my um, testimony. Learned a lot of it, very interesting things about it. But again, I, I'm like, okay, I was going to do this yesterday. I was going to do it today. And it just like, I got to get this whole thing off my chest. Um, you know, I, I just, things have, have got to change. Um, they're, they're going to change. And um, I am open to suggestions. If you want to private message me or whatever else, if you're a friend of the ministry and you have my email, email me. Uh, let me know. Let me know what you think. Um, you know, make a video and, and respond to me if you have any ideas or whatever else. Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, it, it's just, it has gotten to the breaking point now where I'm looking at, again, our finances. Because, you know, I, I hope, I think to myself, okay, as time goes by, the body of Christ will know more and more what I'm doing. We have more subscribers now than we've ever had before. So more subscribers should mean more money. More people understanding the vision of King James Video Ministries to produce no cop non-copyrighted videos that can be put out there for free distribution. But the exact opposite has happened. We made half, less than half, less than half this year, two, well, 2017, than we did in 2016. It's not appropriate. It is not appropriate. And it's not going to continue. Um, I am, you know, I am not going to be going to the secular world to work. Uh, God's given me enough ability and talent and an understanding of Scripture that I can make a living as a preacher. And um, the Lord's just had to get me to this point of just saying, okay, things need to change. So um, the video quality is going to go up a lot more uh, when I'm actually knowing and understanding that my labor's not in vain. I can, you know, because again, I, you know, there's so many things I want to I say here. And that is, you know, you say, well, it's about rewards in heaven. Yeah, sure. But you see, the thing is, if I burn out in 10 years and just finally walk away from the ministry because I can't, I can't take it anymore, I'm not making enough money and we're just whatever, and I go back to the secular world, is that, a, you know, a good thing and stuff? Well, I got 10 years of, of rewards that I'm going to get in heaven. Well, why not do things in a, in a smarter way and be in ministry for my whole life? I, don't, I have no idea how long we're going to be here yet before the catching away of the, the bride of Christ. But, you know, I want to spend my time serving the body of Christ. And I can't do that if we're not making enough money. It's insanity. And the insanity is going to stop. So, um, I do thank those of you who have been faithful to the ministry and who have supported this ministry. And um, I hope to do a better job in the future. I haven't been doing a very good job. Um, not nearly as good as the Lord would have me do. Um, because I go through this depression stuff uh, quite frequently um, because there are months where it's just, we're just scraping by and 
I mean, had we made more money, we could have been out of this place much sooner. Um, all the torment, everything else. I mean, you know, th this this place, you walk out in the hallway out there, it's lath, there's no plaster on the thing. There's, you know, I didn't buy this place to fix it up. If I did fix it up, I'd lose money. It's just crazy. I bought this as a temporary place to, to stay here, run the ministry while we're building at our property, you know, the whole situation. But, you know, we got asbestos ceiling panels downstairs you know the whole downstairs is asbestos ceiling panels we got exposed insulation out here and things like this and i can't spend any money on it because i'm losing money with this place <laughs> so it's done it's over um i would really appreciate your prayers um those of you who support the ministry thank you and um, i will be a much better um, preacher in the future I'm going to be putting out more quality, um, you know, materials and things like that. I do really, really feel a need to get into writing books. Um, I think that that would be very important uh, on the catching away issue, the timing of the what people call the rapture. Um, I'd like to write a book on that uh, and some other things. But, you know, I need to get the income of this ministry up to where it needs to be to make our move happen um, to get a vehicle that's that's you know reliable uh, as as it stands right now. Again, I'll tell you this: um, the the truck that we have. Again, I'm going to be put up. I'll put up a video about this. But the truck that we have, um, it's if I tried to sell it in its condition uh, that it's in, I'm probably going to make about half of what I paid for it. I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be using it uh, as a plow truck plow slash work truck at our new property and um, just going to be retiring it getting it off the road and who cares if the thing is half falling apart and whatever else it's just going to be driving around the property you know on the trails to do firewood and haul rocks around and, and the winter time comes to plow the lane um, and again you know I had to put a plow on the thing and stuff and it's not even all that great of a plow but it just um I hope that you understand, and I think that those of you who are faithful friends of this ministry, I think you do understand. Uh, so, uh, please do keep us in your prayers as we make some hard decisions, um, and uh, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.